Throughout history, Capcom have become known for developing and publishing some of the greatest fighting games of all time, with the recent success of Street Fighter VI adding to their fantastic track record. Over the years on this channel, we've looked at many of this company's amazing fighting games, but sometimes even the greatest of all time have their off days, as illustrated by Capcom Fighting Evolution, a title we've looked at recently on here. But as bad as such a fighting game was, at least it was actually good enough to see a release, right? Sadly, the same cannot be said for the fighter we are discussing today. So join me as we look back at the history of a lost Capcom game that would never make it to market. So with all of this said, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Capcom Fighting All Stars, the unreleased Capcom fighting game. Yeah. While Capcom may be riding high on the refined gameplay and director home nature of its more recent fighting games, it is well documented that Capcom initially struggled with transitioning away from 2D sprite graphics and into the world of polygons. This shift in the mid-1990s, pioneered by Sega's A Virtual Fighter, would be fully embraced by gamers thanks to the likes of Tekken. These fighting game efforts from Sega and Namco left the 2D World Warriors and their noble rivals, Mortal Kombat's defenders of the Earth Realm, feeling a little, well, flat. So Capcom, along with co-producer Arika, explored 3D Street Fighter adventures with the Street Fighter EX series, which despite its noble effort, is primarily remembered for the unique cast of characters, rather than becoming a Tekken beta. Likewise, the rival school's games, Tech Romancer, Star Gladiator and the Power Stone titles attempted to explore the third dimension. But Capcom's fighters, which were stealing the show at the dawn of the millennium, were certainly their chaotic 2D crossover games featuring Marvel and SNK characters. So what could Capcom do with fighting games next past this point to keep audiences engaged? This of course brings us to Capcom Fighting All-Stars, possibly one of Capcom's most notorious cancelled games ever. While many cancelled projects do not make it past the conceptual phase, Fighting All-Stars on the other hand was promoted, test marketed and covered in magazines. You couldn't really miss it, so at one point in time gamers were eager to try this one. The title was initially conceptualised as a 2D sequel to Capcom vs SNK2 Mark of the Millennium 2001 which in itself was a well-regarded Capcom fighter that plays the Street Fighters and adjacent characters against those from the friendly rival SNK's King of Fighters with a fatal fury in their heart. In fact, there was even talk of a Capcom vs SNK 3, which we have discussed in the past on here. But since SNK found themselves in some dire financial straits at the time, a new crossover game between the companies was appearing less likely. The reality was, it very much looked like SNK were going to be no more. Capcom used this as a perfect opportunity to begin poaching SNK staff members. In total, this meant the company had 20 former SNK members ironically working on a Capcom-only crossover game. To aid us with today's tale, fortunately Capcom's own website would have an interview with the director, Toyohisa Tanabe. This is a surprisingly candid interview about the cancelled All-Star project and how it began. Tanabe brings up that Yoshihiki Okamoto was kind enough to pick us up. He said he had just been looking for a team. He was starting up two projects, the first was an action game. The other project was Fighting All-Stars, which I got to lead, since I had a lot of experience with fighting games. There were a lot of team members who said they wanted to do it. Right before Fighting All-Stars got started, there was another fighting game that got stopped during development, so there was the discussion to reuse assets rather than making something from scratch. So it was us trying to make use of that. Together with that we also talked about let's make something with our own flavour and let's make something that isn't very Capcom like. We had concepts like let's make the characters stylish, let's have a deep story, Ryu was going to be in the game and he already had model data, but we talked about changing up his design. Given the name and their iconic world warrior Ryu joining the cast, it seems appropriate that fighting all stars would feature, well, fighting all stars. Ryu would join as the most notable character, effectively the nondescript protagonist of the Street Fighter franchise, but not the only representative. The world's strongest woman Chun-Li, the raging demon Akuma, Street Fighter 3's lead character in name only Alex, and Street Fighter Alpha's Charlie would represent Capcom's most prominent fighting franchise. But being a so-called all-star game, the roster would obviously not stop there. 
The Final Fight franchise would also be represented with the inclusion of Mayor Mike Hager, an iconic character whose presence looms heavy over Metro City even in the days of Street Fighter VI. He would be accompanied by Poison years before she became playable in Street Fighter herself. Building on the roster further from the relatively recent Rival Schools games, Batsu and Akira would join the battle. While Batsu's the poster boy for the franchise, Akira recently returned for Street Fighter V, proving there is a bit of life left in the criminally ignored by Capcom Rival Schools franchise. Lastly, for the Capcom crossovers, characters are two wild cards. The first being Strider Ryu from, well, Strider, and finally rounding out the cast would be a representative from the Darkstalkers franchise. So, obviously, that would be the sexy and sensual Dimitri. Yes, for once, Morrigan wouldn't be the franchise's representative, probably because her 10-year-old sprite would look especially out of place amongst the 3D models. But then that begs the question, if you added Dimitri, you'd want to take advantage of his Midnight Bliss attack, transforming all the men into women, and the women into, well, sexier women, or weird jokes. It's kind of inconsistent. But then again, would Capcom have bothered to build 3D gender swap models for such a limited use? Back in the days of sprite work, all that meant was an extra frame or two of animation, not a fully rigged character, so share your thoughts in the comment section and let us know what you think they would have done. Past this point, interestingly, plans for the roster would not stop there, as it is said there was ideas for this game to include some non-Capcom characters too. Remember I mentioned that the title was largely developed by ex-SNK staff? Apparently they wanted to put Kyo Kusanagi in the game, which I must say works about as well as anyone else. Though, seeing my Shirinui in 3D again may have boosted sales, especially considering a certain Tomb Raider obsessed audience at the time appreciated digital assets. Building on all of this, if this is a game you have seen footage of in the past, you likely know it was intended to have a few of its own exclusive characters too. Capcom Fighting All Stars carry the subtitle of Code Holders. Code Holders were designed to be the new original characters for this title. Fortunately, we can learn more about this as Tanabe would describe the new characters in his interview. The last boss was to be the card holder Death. His lifespan was very short. Death was Ingrid something or the other, and there was a time limit on how long he could be together with her who had a lifespan. Half of his face would be disfigured and his body would be in shambles. He'd use moves that would emit dark matter. I thought we couldn't rely on the effects. He's wearing a long coat right, making it look cool with the technology available at the time was quite challenging. As for Ingrid, he notes that the people who use her could have utilised her however they liked. If they tried to put restrictions on her, then they couldn't make good things, and that would have been pointless. I guess it's because in Fighting All-Stars, I wanted to make her an 80-year-old Lolita Granny. Yikes. Building on information about these mysterious fighters, he outlines that Ingrid and Death are natural card holders who were born with their abilities. DD and Rook were modified to become card holders. Ingrid possessed cells that give her longevity, stopping her becoming weak. Death had a short lifespan, but in return he could use parts of his body to become dark matter. DD's nickname was Crimson Thunder, and he could attack using red coloured lightning bolts, adding he had the plus and minus marks on his gloves, one for each. Luke could move at fast speed. As for his name, we thought he was cool. In Japanese, cool is Kuru, so we just read it backwards to become Rook or Luke. <laughs> Hmm, very interesting. So Capcom planned to have a fighting game character named Luke well before the recent one, simply because Luke means cool spelt backwards. No wonder the new guy seems to be Capcom's answer to Poochie the dog, even though his name alludes to the fact that he was designed based on Capcom's perception of what they think young people find cool. Backwards cool, anti-cool, whatever. Tangents aside, despite the shift to 3D, much of the gameplay that was developed would remain classic in line with Capcom fighting stylings, but the SNK crew would bring a number of new and experimental concepts to the title, as well as the card holders bringing their own twist to the table. The trailers that can be found depict fighters having three tiered life bars. Emptying one of the bars would cause the warriors to return to their corners for a temporary reprieve before returning to the match. The trade-off for losing a bar of life would be that the player would now unlock a second tier or super combo gauge. 
Losing the second chunk of your life will give you access to the third and final chunk of the Super Combo Gauge, allowing players to perform Street Fighter Alpha or Marvel vs Capcom Level 3 Supers. Another important mechanic which was part of fighting all stars would be dramatic counters. When discussing the dramatic counter ability, Tanabe adds that, upon successfully hitting it the entire game would slow down. The idea was to have continual dodging and attacking, which would have been cool. I wanted to have that exchange between dodging and attacking, but then one of the higher ups called me into his office and said, do you think this design as is would get us four weeks worth of special feature coverage in Famitsu? All I could say was, I'll work harder. Another feature included something known as the Declaration of Victories. And Tanabe states, we talked about something to taunt the opponent before a fight. From there we came up with a declaration of victory term, and it sounded nice so we decided to run with it. If a player did the declaration of victory, it would be added to their score and they get a special win pose. With all these new concepts in play, the game was released to test audiences in 2003, but was immediately hated by the player base. Sadly, rather than trying to fix the game, Capcom would instead take the drastic manoeuvre to cancel the game in August of that very same year. Focus would be shifted to the production to a spiritual alternative, the dismissive and disappointing Capcom Fighting Evolution, which as you know we've already discussed on here at length. When the Fighting All Stars game was eventually cancelled, Tanabe would feel as if it was a personal fault and he was directly responsible for what went wrong, adding, I felt that Fighting All Stars ended the way it did due to my inexperience. It caused problems to the company, and I'm sorry to the staff who worked hard on it, and everyone who helped us. Even 10 years later, it's still a bit difficult to talk about. However, I felt like I'd been saved a little bit when Ingrid appeared in Fighting Evolution. The new characters wouldn't be totally wasted, as Ingrid would be included in Capcom Fighting Evolution, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max for the PSP, Project X Zone 2 for the 3DS, and would appear in the Otro Ranger superhero musical mobile game alongside DD and Rook. So Capcom clearly liked the character, who in his own words described as a Lolita granny. Moving past this point, Capcom would eventually find success with 2.5D fighting games. Street Fighter 4, Tatsunoko vs Capcom, and Marvel vs Capcom 3 would all be successes. While Capcom does acknowledge that this game existed, Unfortunately, it has never been leaked online in a playable format, cleaned up for a novelty digital release, or tried again as a side project alongside the bigger, more marketable hits. This is a shame really, as I am sure many of you at home would be keen to at least try this out. Still, the mystery and allure surrounding unreleased games never ceases to interest me, and in many cases, these scrap titles often make their way out into the wild anyway, so never say never regarding playing this one. Anyway, if you're one of my new viewers, make sure you subscribe, then it probably makes sense for you to click my Capcom Fighting Evolution video now. Yeah, cheerio!